Hello, my name is Darrell Obert and I'm going to show you the new things you can do with the Subscription Advantage Pack from Maya 2011. The first thing we're going to look at is the Substance Procedural Texture. You can choose from a library of 75 different textures. These resolution independent textures have a tiny memory and disk footprint, making them ideal for export to game engines via Algorithmix Substance Air middleware. For this example, we're going to go ahead and grab the Dry Ground version 2 and we'll generate a shading network from that. You'll notice that the shading network automatically has a normal map, a diffuse, and a specularity already hooked up, and we'll just go and assign that to our ground plane. At any given time, you can jump back into the substance texture and begin modifying some of its attributes. So we'll go and we'll increase the age slider, which introduces some cracking into our ground plane. You also have the ability to export disk images, so you can bake this procedural texture out to use with any of your software renderers. The next feature that we're going to be looking at is the craft animation tools. Now it's significantly easier to create believable complex vehicle simulations and natural camera movements that mimic real world setups. We're going to be using the craft tools to animate this Jeep around our environment. So we'll start off by creating a new four wheel vehicle simulator and aligning our Jeep to it. Next we're going to go ahead and adjust the overall radius of our simulated wheels so that they better match the radius of the Jeep's wheels and we'll begin to make a relationship between the high-res Jeep geometry and the low-res simulated geometry. So this is just a simple process inside of Maya of dragging and dropping. So I've already done the front wheels, and now I'm doing the back wheels. With that completed, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and define the ground plan on which this simulated vehicle is going to run. So we'll grab this arrow, and we'll drag and drop that onto our ground plane. Now all the setup work is done, we can go ahead and hide that low-res geometry and just watch the simulation play back on our high-res Jeep. We'll bring up the inputs window, and this is where you can go ahead and attach your rigs to joysticks or other input devices, and enabling the animator an intuitive way to drive the vehicles or cameras while automatically recording the paths. For this example, we're going to go ahead and use a keyboard input device. So my arrow keys will give me my forward and backwards movement, left and right obviously will turn the vehicle, and then my control key goes ahead and works the brake. We go and we go into a record mode, in just a second here you'll see that Right off the bat, my car starts uh, simulating. So if I drive it around by using my arrow keys here, you can see that we have some nice natural movement. Obviously, if we go and bring this window over here, and kind of pull back a little bit, you can see there's some terrain for my, for my truck to kind of run up on here, my little Jeep, so I can kind of drive it up over here and bring it around, maybe reverse it back. So really, really fast, very intuitive, easy to set up car simulator. And the next thing that we want to look at is how we can use some of the camera animation tools inside of the Craft Director Studio to ease that workflow. So let's go ahead and create another type of camera. In this case, we're going to go ahead and create a soft motion camera. So there you can see it's in my environment. We'll go ahead and we'll view through that soft motion camera. And I want to just begin framing up this vehicle. I want to get kind of a back three-fourths view of my truck here, something sort of like that jump over to my perspective view, you can kind of see where that is. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this camera and parent it into the hierarchy of that vehicle so it's going to chase it. And the thing that the soft motion cam is going to give me is it's going to give me kind of a nice dampened effect or soft motion effect of that camera movement chasing that truck around while we begin to drive it. So let's go ahead and bring back up my uh, tools here. We can go back to a full screen mode, turn the record back on. And you can see uh, as I start to move this around here, there's a little bit of give, a little bit of sway, maybe turn the brakes on. So it's not exactly parented into the hierarchy of that truck. We have this nice little bobble, that nice little effect happening as we drive that vehicle around. So that's just a couple of examples of how you can use the craft animation tools to help you do complex vehicle simulations and really, really cool smooth camera movements. Next, we're going to be looking at Effects Asset. You can select from a range of easy-to-use effects, and for this example, we're going to drop the Bomb Effects Asset into our scene and begin playing it back. You'll see that what we have here is a relatively complex simulation. This is made up of end particles, fluids, there's some emitters in the scene, and obviously some forces moving this around. The effects assets are based on the asset framework inside of Maya, so what this does is it gives us the ability to collect all the different attributes that go into making this overall effect up and publish those attributes to a single asset node. This gives the artist one single place to go and begin modifying parameters to change the overall look and feel of the effect. So for this example, we'll go ahead and we'll increase the speed at which those projectiles are coming out to something like five. Oops, let's do uh, five on that guy, and we'll just play this back one more time. 
So the overall idea behind the effects asset is to present the animators with all the relevant attributes that they need to begin animating in one easy to use asset node. The last feature that we'll be looking at is the new motion capture samples. Maya 2011 now ships with 70 motion capture samples that you can use to quickly set up pre-visualizations or develop animations. It's broken out into different categories for actors for both male and female. And we'll just go ahead and drag and drop one of these into our scene and look at what they, uh, look at what they offer. So it's just a simple motion capture example. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could use the powerful retargeting tools inside of Maya 2011 to take this animation and apply it to any of your characters in your scene. So that's just a couple of the things that were improved. We saw the substance procedural texture, the craft animation tools, the effects assets, and the inclusion of the 70 motion capture samples.